Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're gonna to talk about reverse curve wires. There's upper ones, there's lower ones, and if you flip them over, they're called accentuating curves. For, so for terms of abbreviation and brevity, I use the um, acronym RCS for reverse curve of speed wire, and ECS for extenuated um, curve of speed wire. So reverse curve is to open a deep bite. Extenuated curve is to close an open bite. How do these work? Well, I've made plenty of other videos on how they work. So if you want to access that, please go into my YouTube channel, put in the search bar, Straight Smile Solutions. That'll take you to my YouTube channel, which has a green banner. Once you're there, there's a little magnifying glass towards the right of the tabs, not in the top right hand corner, but near the right. And you could put in the acronym RCS or ACS, better RCS, a reverse curve, and it all my videos should pop up explaining exactly how they work and when to use them. But here the specific question is, should you just use lower only or should you do upper versus lower? How does that work? So you have to remember what they do. Obvious reverse curve helps to level the curve of speed. This is something that can happen naturally if you just let the wires work or you put in an anterior bite plate or anterior bite turbos. Personally, I don't use reverse curves until the very, 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 very end of treatment because I've seen what happens when you leave them in too long. And if you put one in and then you take it out and put a flat wire in, you're pretty much negating what you already did. So for me, it's like a last minute thing. We Everything's straight, we're class one, you know, but the bite is still a little bit deep. I don't quite wanna finish, what do I do? Well, of course, the first thing I would do is I would have tried the other ways to level at the beginning with the bite turbos and the bite plate and box elastics and probably bonding the lower seven second molars to level the curve of speed. Can't really level it very well if you're only going to the sixes, right? That's not gonna work. So I would try all that first. And if I still had a slightly deep bite at the very, very end, I would put in an RCS wire to help me out. Also, sometimes I put one in, this is a bit of a one-off, Let's say there's a situation where you have spaces on the top, maybe some overjet, maybe you took out upper fours, you're trying to close the space, but the front teeth are a little bit deep and the lower brackets are blocking the space closure. Sure, you could put some bite bumps on the back teeth, but for me, in a deep bite case, you know, where maybe I should have done something, but I didn't at the beginning and I don't want to go back to the beginning to level and line in that first phase with an appliance and elastics, then I might put in a reverse curve just for a short period of time just to open that bite so that I can close those spaces on top and then I'm going to take it out and do things another way. But anyways, let's talk about upper versus lower. For the most part, I only use lower. The problem is whenever you're using was, and this is how it's going to go in, right? If you're doing reverse curve, it looks like a curve, right? And yeah, I usually buy the night tie ones. I usually use 18 or 1925. Sure, you can make your own out of stainless steel. We did that in residency. It's a heck of a lot of work and it's really hard to make it even. So, and it's even harder to put it in. So pass on that. I'll just buy the expensive pre-made ones. Um, when you put it in, you gotta see, basically your teeth are gonna move like the like the night tie shape, right? So the back is gonna intrude, the molars are gonna intrude a little bit, the premolars are gonna extrude, and the incisors are gonna intrude. Same thing if you put in the top one, um, the top version, same thing are gonna happen. So what's gonna happen if you do top and bottom together? First of all, if you have a gummy smile, that kind of makes sense, because this is gonna push up, right? So it's gonna be less gummy. If you have extruded lower incisors, that's gonna make sense, because this is gonna intrude it, right? So you gotta see where you actually need it. Where's the problem? For the most part, I don't even know if I've done an upper one ever. I've done an upper accentuated, which is, basically a flipped version of it on open bite cases and usually on deep bite cases I do a lower you don't really want to do upper and lower together because you're just going to end with a posterior open bite on the molars for the most part um, so that's why I don't recommend that but anyways that is a story and I'll tell you the story what happens when you leave a reverse curve wire in too long I saw one in one office I was filling in for it was some type of DSO and the patient had moved to Mexico for a year and little did they know the reverse choir wire was in. And this is another comment I wanna make about reverse curve wires. You need to have a tight hold on those patients. I almost want you to put an alert, run up, put a code in so you know exactly who has reverse curve wires in at all times. If they miss an appointment, they have to come in. It's not for someone who's going on an extended vacation, might be disappearing, a patient that's kind of flaky. You need to make it crystal clear that they must come in in four weeks or you're gonna hunt them down. You're gonna go to their door and knock on the door because I don't remember if this patient had it in first nine months, 12 months longer, but when she came back, her arches, and I think she had upper and lower end, look like potato chips. Literally, they look like a Pringles chip. It, the, it was blown out buckly. Um, super posterior open bite on the molars, just like like a centimeter. It was like her face was messed up, her bite was messed up. 
I don't even remember what I did. I think I took them out, put no wires in for a little while, and then I don't know that I saw her again, and we escalated the situation. I wasn't really my patient. I was just babysitting them. Um, but it was horrifying, whatever I saw. And it was a kid or a teenager or something, and I was, like, so horrified. I mean, I'm so surprised the parents didn't notice that. I mean, the, even the front teeth were, like, like weird flare. Anyways, I hope she didn't lose her teeth. That's all I can say. Um, but this is why you have to really, I just, I see so many general dentists just putting it in. Hey, reverse carb. Uh, do you know what happens if you lose this patient? Remember, if a patient disappears, that's patient abandonment on you. If you haven't done everything, I mean, if you didn't know this was in and what could happen. So this is, this is a big issue with me is patient abandonment because it's on you, the doctor. And I feel like so many general dentists don't realize if their patient doesn't show up and they have braces on, it's on them, any damage that can happen. You have to be, you have to know who your ortho patients are. You have to know who has what and what things are dangerous if you let them go, you know, unbabysat. So anyways, a bit of a rant, but I want you guys to understand that these wires can be dangerous. So be careful. Thanks.